Good morning everybody and happy new year. This is John Cintron from CintronAthleticTraining.com and today I'm going to go through a daily or weekly as you might say how I eat and use intermittent fasting for keeping on muscle while dropping body fat. Uh, this is a program that I have used and again it might not work for you, you might not like it. Over the past year, I've tried to use other programs that it asks to eat more or to uh, change the macronutrients of how I eat, but they don't work for me. So I am back to eating the way that I feel better and perform better. So today you're going to get a rundown on how a daily training day goes and then I will explain how I go on the day that I have a cheat meal and why. So my normal day starts off with liquids which is drinking black coffee. I drink black coffee throughout the early morning. I don't ingest any food. Um, again I don't put any cream or sugar because again I want to be low carbs from the majority of the time. So, I drink the black coffee and about 11.45 I drink, I have my first meal of breaking the fast, which is usually a high protein, low carbohydrate meal. And this could be either um, a bag of nuts or seeds, which either peanuts, almonds, or cashews I eat and drink water. Some of you may have seen that I have been drinking monster uh, drinks during my lunch as well as I have posted uh, on some pictures but um, something that I've noticed is that the monsters have a little bit too much carbonations which bloat my stomach which I don't like and I don't like seeing uh, having a bloated stomach uh, because or, inf or inflame inflammation so I've been drinking, so I drink either so, some more coffee and water. Again, I drink lots of water because you need this to take out toxins from your body and to um, flush out uh, and help you recover. Your muscles need to be hydrated. Again, so this is about 11.45, 12 o'clock. That's my first meal, which is lunch. And I keep that or uh, very low carbohydrates. I don't want to be having anything um, as an energy source except for fats. I use the fats to help uh, burn off uh, burn off the calories and stuff like that. So now at about 2 o'clock on training day I take two scoops of brain chain amino acids and one scoop of creatine. Now, I take this for one majority reason, and that is to prevent muscle breakdown. Because I don't want, since I haven't been eating that much, I don't want my muscles to break down through this process. This is one of the things that, that people talk about intermittent fasting, saying that muscles are going to be broken down because of the long period of fasting. Again, in my case, that's not the, that's not true. I turn around, so I take two scoops of amino acid, branch chain amino acids, and one scoop of creatine. Now, in the I've used uh, in the this is right now this is Muscle Farm that I'm using. In the past, I've used Infinite Labs, basically on all my uh, training programs. Um, it's a supplement company that I've been using for a long time. I also won one of their challenges a couple of years ago. Another company that I like using their supplements from is uh, Twin Lab. Twin Lab has been around for m lots and lots of years. So you can use one of those companies or an any other company that you like. But this is what I use. Again, some people I might say that I'm using too much, but I use two scoops of the amino acids. If I had to choose which supplement to take out, it would be the creatine because the branching amino acids really, really works for me. 
Now, this also, what it does is it takes away, it curbs my appetite. So when I go into a workout, I don't feel hungry, which is important. And a lot of people feel that they're going to drag if they haven't been eating or eating before work. Uh, I'm going to tell you that's nonsense. That's complete bullshit. I've had my hardest workouts on going 24 hours with no f food. Having the, my pre uh, supplement, which is the branch chain amino acids and the creatine, and worked out extremely hard. So a lot of it is mental. So after this, I do my workout and I train about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. I don't want to go into two hours. I mean, everything is planned out. My warm up, my strength work, my conditioning work. This is, there's no time. I, uh, I have a family, I have, like most of you do, I have things to do. Getting in there, doing the job, breaking the muscle and getting out. And then after that, it's time to like I say, break the muscle, build the muscle. So what I do now after I'm done training and I train at home, so which is great because I don't have to worry about the travel. So I have my food. I can either prepare it or have it already prepared. So now comes my meal, which is the most important part of the training and how I feed it. And what I do is eat lots of protein, fats, and carbohydrates. So my proteins will consist of eggs, chicken, steak. I don't take uh, fish because it just keeps you, um, doesn't fill you up enough and makes you hungry. So as far as the carbohydrate sources, I usually use sweet potatoes because my body seems to absorb the carbohydrates that it needs right away and it doesn't uh, go to fat. In the past, I've tried um, broccoli or rice, and all that did was make me retain too much fat. So, as far as, as long as I train hard enough and my muscles depleted, the best source of energy for me, for as far as carbohydrates, is sweet potatoes. So I eat about two, two or three of them. The, small nothing gigantic depending on how I feel or my body needs from recovering from the training again protein is a lot sometimes I might have five eggs with sweet potatoes post-workout and it feels good the fats from the eggs and the protein work excellent for me I also could have a small amount of steak and eggs again with the sweet potatoes and lots of water the only two liquids that I like to have in my body are water and black coffee. So basically, I only drink the black coffee during the morning, but throughout the day, I have a lot of water. I could also add um, lemon to it to help detoxify the body. So a little bit after this, I turn around and I'll have maybe a small meal, another meal if I want. Now I go back to no carbohydrates again. So what I do is I'll have several scoops of peanut butter before I go to sleep. I don't like taking protein shakes. I prefer to eat food all the time because it's better for you and your body need, it works much better than taking supplements. I've taken protein powders in the past and it just makes me kind of bloated. So I really don't go through um, taking that kind of supplementation like that. So. I can, I'll eat uh, several amount of scoops. I don't count how many scoops of peanut butter. All I know is I don't touch any carbohydrates. So basically, my post-workout meal is the only meal where I have carbohydrates. So at 9 o'clock, that's it. There's no more eating at all. My, I have my body dialed in that at 9 p.m. I do not eat no matter what. No, I can drink water if I want maybe have some tea. Another thing is winter time here in New York City, I'll have ginger tea to help my immune system and to have more liquids and have a little, again, I do not put any sugar. You'll also see that I don't eat fruits. Fruits have sugars in them and they make me fat. They keep me from being ripped and I don't want to be fat. I'm puffy. Uh, 
I don't suggest anyone to be eating fruits. People say how valuable they are and stuff like that. I'm telling you, from my experience, how I use it, all they do is make me fat and it's something sweet. Now, if, well, if you really, really need to have some fruit, I would have fruit post-workout and make it small portions because again whatever carbohydrates your body does not burn or need is going to store as fat that is important so nine o'clock i will turn around and that's it so before bedtime i will have zma now this is one supplement that i really feel good with this supplement it doesn't matter the brand it has I have felt the difference from it that when I take it I sleep nice and calm I wake up feeling more refreshed not as sore so it is a very important supplement it's not expensive it's not nothing fancy but it does help me I've had people turn around and tell me I really don't feel it I don't well you don't have to take it but I do and like again I'm talking about this is my personal training regimen of how I do and for those who have seen videos of me training before or have seen my before and after pictures that I've put on, on Instagram or in contests they know that I have put on muscle gotten ripped and my performance continues to improve so Again, my, I don't train for looks and how this thing in my eating and my training reflects how I look. Again, this is something that um, works well for me. It's not for everyone. So I basically eat like this six days out of the week. Now, you can do, we're going to go into the cheat meal day, which normally falls on a Saturday. And I say day, people say meals, they don't. Again, I still do the, the whole fat, drinking coffee in the morning on a cheat day. I don't eat, um, usually I'll fast a little bit longer on cheat day. I might just wait till maybe two, three o'clock instead of 11.45, 12 to eat. But when I eat, I eat whatever I want. I want. I have a 10 year old daughter that wants to be a normal kid. You shouldn't have your lifestyle cramped up because oh my god I can't eat that because I'm gonna train and work. It doesn't, it causes unwanted stress on you. It makes people not want to be around you. So again I eat. I mean one of my favorite cheat meals is Reese's ice cream. I guess now because it's winter time it's really not something that I can eat like that. It's kind of cold. I mean I could do it but Again, it doesn't uh, make me feel too great with how cold it is. I prefer warm weather to train. So, this is an important thing to do, to have that cheat meal. And why I tell you to do it is because your body gets adjusted to a certain amount of calories and how you eat. So, you might, can, if you eat the same things over and over for a certain amount of time, your body's smart enough to go, you know what, I'm not going to work no more. I'm going to turn around and stop. And that's not what you want. You want to keep progressing. So you have a hormone in your body called leptin that makes you, it recognizes when you're eating clean and after a while it'll stop working. So what the cheat meal does, it makes you body recognize, oh, they're off their diet, they're eating again, let me turn around and now start working, so if you're eating, if you eat some pizza, ice cream and stuff like that, that your body ha d doesn't recognize before what happens, or it starts working, so what, the, and so you do that, and again, I haven't felt any difference of, that I, you know, and one day that I turn around and put on 15 or 20 pounds, I mean, somebody else might. Again, I don't need the food like that. I could, I mean, I might eat like three or four slices of pizza and call it a day, and that's it. My body does, works better when it's my stomach is lighter, and I feel better. And if you feel better, mentally you're gonna perform better. So it's a lot of a mental as well as um, your physical output and how you eat. So, what I do is then, after the cheat day is the next day, I go right back on my diet. 
So your body's like automatically you have to shut down and again and start working. You're like, oh, here we go, back into the fat burning and muscle building zone that you're getting into. So that's what how I usually do it. So on Sunday, I'm back. I'm eating my good food. Now, if I have an event on a Sunday, I'll just eat clean all the way from Monday to Saturday and just do the same thing in my cheat day on a Sunday. On a Sunday. But it, as long as you keep the one day in and you, you pick and choose it, your body will work. You shouldn't be, be a slave to eating or feel uncomfortable while you're eating. It causes unwanted stress. It takes away from all your, um, all your gains. Um, the longest I went without a cheat meal using intermittent fasting was for 12 weeks. And I got down to 164 pounds and I was shredded. Um, I, and I tried to get even better than that in shape and all I did was wind up getting injured. Which went into this year that I really couldn't train the way I wanted. So I would suggest that you could either do, depending on how serious or how hard you want to train, you can do the intermittent fasting cheat uh, meal on one day of the of the week or you can do it once a month and see how that works and see if your gains will get even better if you're going if you're really getting ready to peak for a competition or for um or for a bodybuilding contest or anything like that as far, so this is how i basically eat and train pretty much all year round i feel best I don't feel I don't want to be a slave of eating five to six meals a day. I've heard all the controversy of like you're not going to build muscle, and how it, you you need it and you're in catabolic state and how many calories you need, and all that. And you know what? One of the first questions when people see me, I'm in shape. They ask me is like, what are you on? What are you taking? And how do you, you know how do you eat? And they think it's so hard, and it's not. It's just pretty much eating good food, taking the supplements at the right time, and sleeping and resting. Everything has its place. It's a system of how it is. Working out shouldn't be so complex on how people make it. Again, why should you listen to me? I'm not anybody well known. I'm not on the cover of Flex Magazine, Muscle and Fitness. That's right. I'm not. Because... I'm just a regular guy, but I don't look like a regular guy when I'm in shape. So I'm just like everybody out there. I'm not a genetic freak. So if I can make this work, why shouldn't you be able to make it work? So um, again, you should be doing a lot of research. Before I started in testing, and I'm always testing different little things. I mean, I could do another follow-up video a month later saying how I changed my strategies of using intermittent fasting but you need to read and one of the books I've read was uh, The Warrior Diet from Ari Hoffmeyer. I've also read on uh, stuff that's been written by guys that have tried um, their approach to intermittent fasting and I picked bit, bits and pieces. There's another guy that uses all the time intermittent fasting his name is Steve Maxwell and he's like 60 years old and he walks around at 6 to 8% body fat. And he's another guy that's in shape and he's well known and he's also a jiu-jitsu guy. So that's how he eats in his 60s old, he's still mean and lean. And I want to be, a, these are my main goals is to be mean and lean and be able to perform. So these are some of the things that are uh, you can do on how I train and you can try to implement it and if you have any questions please comment email me like the com like the uh, video share the video if you want to go more into detail or write a detail I have my ebook on my website um, www.centronicletentraining.com you go to the store it's on a year of my training and dieting on how I got myself into shape by just working out at home. Again, you don't have to get it. You can, but you can go to the website and have little um, blog posts that I've done that you might find uh, tips in there if you want to use. 
So if you have any questions, again, feel free to comment. I would prefer that they be positive. Or if you have a question I w and I don't know the answer, I will try to find the answer for you or refer you to someone that might know more about the subject than me. Again, because this is what I've done. I'm not a doctor. I'm just a regular trainer that found what works best for me and how my body um, responds better. So I will say thank you for listening to this. I hope to hear positive comments from you and all of you have a safe and happy new year and let's hope that um, you make a lot of gains and I'll see you soon. Take care.